Tomlin came up with a list. I got to clean up all my bouncing F three fifty notes um, to be able to get that back to Ron. Um, I also went out with him before the meeting tonight and went through Mill Road, Carlin Trail. Um, there's a handful of additional trees, whether it was after the fact, immediately thereafter, or some of the other stuff um, that's been gone through, and, and we kind of itemized some, hey, make sure we don't miss it while they're here. Correct me if I'm wrong, this week, beginning of next week, sometime they're gonna be out. Um, again, potentially sounds bass backwards, but start with the smaller stuff first and do the bigger stuff last, because they're gonna be setting up residency on areas like Mill Road and, and stuff like that. Um, beyond that part, when we get to that point, um, first of all, thanks on the invoicing piece when I saw those come through and they were like nine of them, I thought, oh, like crap sake, but to see the itemization of them is going to make the other administrative side of this way easier. I've dealt with FEMA paperwork before and, and having clear and concise invoices and, and that kind of information makes the whole process easier. At some point, Donna's probably going to think this as well, um, still got to figure out the finite details of what kind of recovery we may see with some of this. So, okay, initially, folks, um, you know, uh, initially we uh, uh, estimate seventy thousand to clean up the township. That's an estimate. I will tell you that I was Donna's first phone call that she got because I called before I went to bed Saturday night. I said, if there's any disaster, we're we'll looking for it because we got a bad guy. Since then, did you participate in the? Uh, oh, you participated in that phone meeting, and and you did. Do you want to explain that a little bit? That they're going to pay seventy percent. Right, and based on the invoices that we got, that's really going to help them determine how much we're going to get. Because the more detail you can give, that's really going to help your case with it. It rubber stamps it essentially with all of the details. That, like I said, good job, right? Because. <laughs> The invoices with all the information, the amount of time used, the equipment used, the, uh, the lo GPS location of, of each individual item that they were working on is just, she's going to look at it and oh, all yeah, that rubber stamp and, and carry yeah. on. I think the only part that gets a little complicated is if you don't already have a company that you work with and that you have a contract with and you start having individuals do the work, it gets a little bit worse because you can't compensate them for their equipment, but you can for the use of the equipment, and you have to know like how many, how much an hour you're paying them based on someone else, and so there's a lot more complications on that side of it. Yeah. But I think your, your major cost share um, being, being that, the way that it was invoiced is, is going to be exceptional for you. And yes, the, the town would be a 30 you would be at thirty percent cost share for, for whatever they approve. Right. <clears throat> if there's anything else anybody sees, it's a drive around, obviously. Me, Frank, Rob, whoever it may be. Um, I think I've been through four times since a week ago, but it's pretty obvious the ones that are twisted and dead now are different than the <laughs> ones that are just twisted and green from this past week. There does seem to be a few on marks that are pretty close yeah. to the road as well. Yeah. If, the, if you're meeting another car. We got that today. We were going to okay. call this. We passed out. I know that the school buses are going to have some issues too. Yeah. Well, we don't want the school buses all smashed up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Anything else? Number six, discussion, whoops, number five. number five, discussion possible action on 2023-002 orders to create a five-member board. We tabled it the last time. If I recall the last time, we were to think about what we, the new board members were, what assignments we were going to do the new board members, or what they would do, correct? <coughs> yeah, I, I mean, additionally, I'm wondering if, if we're still staying with a once a month meeting. I know we've had way more than just once a month, once a month meeting since May, but, um, you know, are we looking to go towards a two meeting a month format, or are we staying with one meeting a month, five members, 
discussion about that side of it. So. Yeah. No, I know. I'm, I'm just going to do something. With five members, I think once a month works. Um, I think it would be something where we, if we do go forward with this, we, once we get to the five, we see how it goes. And if we want to increase it to twice a month after we you know, have some experience with five, we would. But I don't know whether we can make the decision today. Or, do you, or are you saying it should be part of this? Um, I mean, I think for a comprehensive conversation. Well, I think I think we had this written up because we we're all in favor of it. Has anybody's opinion changed? I'm, uh, admittedly, I'm I'm still on the fence as I was last month as far as. Benefit over institutionalizing this, but I, I will tell you flat out that continuity of government is a huge piece of the puzzle. And having your only three elected people all elected and potentially at the same time, like what happened this spring, um, it's happened in the past in the past ten years where there's been kind of a clearinghouse thing. Um, I think having two stationary members would be hugely advantageous to help the new ones to keep the momentum of town business going and that type of thing. Um, and at the same point, I think if we're going to put two additional people on this board, that they also have to hold some sort of proverbial weight behind it and not just be yeah. two more beautiful faces to stare at. Okay, you're welcome. Stage. Well, did you want me to read it? Oh, that's probably a good idea. Okay. Town of Myra, Wisconsin Ordinance Number 2023-002, Ordinance Creation of a Five-Member Board. The Town Board of the Town of Myra, Jefferson County, Wisconsin, has the specific authority under 60.10, Prend 2, Prend C, 60.21, Prend 1, and 60.22, Prend 3. Wisconsin statutes to adopt this ordinance to establish a five-member board. This ordinance adopted by a majority of the town board on a roll call vote with a quorum present and voting and proper notice having been given does hereby ordain as follows. Section 1 purpose. The purpose of this ordinance is to provide greater representation to the residents of the town of Palmyra via five-member board. Section 2 adoption of ordinance. Pursuant to authorizations under 60.21 print 1 Wisconsin statutes, the Town Board of the Town of Palmyra, Jefferson County elects to create a five-member Town Board as follows. For the spring election in April 2024, Supervisor 3 and Supervisor 4 will be elected for two-year terms. Supervisor 3 and Supervisor 4 will remain on the even-year election rotation every two years. The Chairman of the Board and Supervisor 1 and Supervisor 2 will remain on the odd-year election rotation every two years. Section 3, effective date, this ordinance shall take effect immediately upon passage, posting and publication as provided under 60.80 Wisconsin statutes. And then there's the adoption and the posting date and the signatures. I make a motion that uh, we adopt the ordinance as uh, just read. <coughs> a motion has been made to uh, pass the ordinance that the clerk has read. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in, all in favor? Well, I have to do a roll call vote. Do okay. you want any discussion? Any discussion? If this does move forward, I hope that we do the groundwork because it's essentially our decision at this point, what, at least for the immediate future, what a five person board would look like, do, function, all that kind of stuff. I know we got our plate full monthly here, but well, it makes sense to have those discussions um, and try to plan for it. I do think some of what it will do will depend on the expertise of the people that are running as far as what assignments we give out, things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, certainly setting up some framework and things like that makes a lot of sense, and I agree with you. Um, I'm not sure we can 100% tie it down. Certainly makes sense to at least get a framework out there. 
I would make the comment that uh, you know, three of us sitting up here, folks, all want the best for the township. We're working 100% for the township. We're trying to scrap things together like the road money to take care of the township. We've got to get the township back in order because it's literally the let go. I get the phone calls and I will mention the names if somebody asks on who's called me and complained about this, that, or whatever. Some of them I obviously don't know. They just call or text me. But all three of us up here are committed to you. And we need something like that that's committed to the township as the township and wants to move forward, not live in the past. That's my statement. Discussion and possible action on the. Mm -hmm. What is this? We have no understanding. We have no understanding between Jefferson County and the town of Elmira for the use of municipal tax collection, receiving, and pet licensing software program. Right. So the county had uh, the system that the county used for property tax payment and dog licensing was an outside vendor and they've identified that there were issues with that and the cost of it was going up. They tried to go around and find other vendors that might have a similar uh, software program. Mm -hmm. They couldn't find anything that they liked so they decided that they would create their own. I've seen it a couple of times. We're supposed to have one more session on September 12th, I think it is, for the final review and um, teaching of how it works. Um, and what we need to do is uh, decide if we're going to go with that system. But the question ha you have is if we don't go with that system, what are you going to do? So if you're going to go with that system, then we need to sign this form and then give it back to them. So it's basically going to have the same functionality, but it's just going to look different. Wise. Um, I don't know if they have that in there. Let me see if they had it in the letter that we got. I can find the letter. Um, so I had a clerk letter that went along with it. And it may be something that I learned at the September 12th meeting. An annual fee of $500 will be charged to each municipality for the use of the system and yearly support. An additional fee will be assessed if a municipality needs additional FOBs for dual factor authentication, whatever. Thank you. The first fee will occur in 2024 and invoice in January of 2024. So um, it's similar to um, the Wisconsin Elections Commission system that I go into. I have a little fob that I insert into the computer and, and I have my user ID and password that allows me to get into it. Um, I'll have to have a fob for this system as well to be able to get into it. So $500 a year um, are with the external contract for this, will we pay you anything? How does that compare? Yes, I, I have to look to see what we've paid to um, I can't think of the name of the company, something assessment, um, what we paid to them before. I have a feeling that $500 is less than what we paid, okay. but I'd have to check into that. Okay. Well, we really don't have a choice at this point either. Do we yes, the other if you don't away? do it, what are you going to do? All right, so no. do we need any type of action here to... Yes. I would make a motion that we authorize the signing of the memorandum of, memorandum of understanding between the Jefferson County um, and the Town of Meyer for the use of their municipal tax collection, receiving and pet licensing and software program. Motion been made to pass item number six on our new business. 
Uh, this will be the municipal tax collection, the senior and pet license software program. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number seven. Discussion and possible action on the upcoming expiration of agreement for snow removal, roadside, and right of way maintenance with Northwest Services Incorporated. When does it expire? October 1st. October 31st. I'm sorry. October 31st. I'm sorry. October 31st. Yeah, um, oh, go ahead. I honestly don't know if there's anything I need to say. I mean, I've had the contract, I think we do a great job. You know, it's, we're willing to extend the contract again. Um, At current rates? Or has there been a new proposal given? No, I haven't raised the rates. Okay, I'm, so I'm not planning on raising okay. the rates. I mean, unless, I, I will have new stipulation about the diesel fuel. If it goes from $4.50 to $8 a gallon, that will change. Yeah. But that's how it's been anyway. But I don't think it's written in there, but that's how it's always been done. But I've never raised it. So, um, my question to you guys, and I've talked to Frank about this, is on the brining. If, I don't know if you guys are for or against, but what I am telling you, and I said this last year to the board, that it can be done cheaper than it is right now, because when Ed and I and Greg originally started this brining, we were planning on just doing around the lake, Parkview Circle, and Tamarack and Prairie. So we have a 500 gallon tank. And last year I talked about getting a couple thousand gallon tank. Well now I have enough CDL drivers I can go up to a 4,000 gallon tank and there'd be no stopping. Every time we stop to fill up 500 gallons is 13 minutes to fill it. Plus the time it took to get to the tank. That's why I put tanks located around the town. Kind of drove it know how many miles you can go and put the tanks in the most logical places to cut the time down. But that in turn would bring down the price even more. The main thing that I see with the brine is when we use it pre-brine because it absolutely stopped the bus, the bus company from calling us. Because even though there's snow on top of the road, they can still get down and bite the road and get moving. Versus it packs down and it's just stuck. And I know you guys want to try to get Greg here. I know he's in Chicago teaching a class on Brian right now. Um, but I know he would be more than willing because we talked today about this. This will be it. So I, I will make the commitment, if you guys make the commitment, I'll make the commitment to buy the 4,000 gallon or 3,000 gallon truck so it can be done in one fill up. And it would be cheap. Oh yeah, because every five miles, we don't have a tank every five miles, so no matter what, wherever we run out, we have to drive back to that tank, then it's, I know it's 13 minutes to fill up a 500 gallon tank. How much do you use in the township when you go out and you're uh, ready, it, here it, comes it, the snow? It really depends upon, sometimes if we just believe it's going to snow and it's 28 degrees, you can thin out how many gallons per mile you drop. But if you know it's going to drop, Brian, that's a, the issue with brine, you have to be a lot more precise about your application. It's not like just throwing salt on and salt's done, you're done. You put brine down, since it is water, act, with water it activates fast, it's, it's a good little bit of snow. Three times this year we plowed all the rest of the towns, it didn't plow you guys because we used brine. All right, you know, we plow Hebron, we plow Cold Spring, we plow Jefferson, we plow Waterloo. We didn't have to plow you guys. The brine took care of it. So, I would say that it's really hard to tell. I mean, it's kind of one of those things where you say how much salt or sand do you use. Since it is based off how cold it is, how much you need. And if it's been cold that day or if it's been sunny that day. I mean, I have four of my trucks. The trucks that are in this town all have uh, temperature gauges on them so I can temperature the road, actually know the road. But I can also call Greg at the county and say, hey, what's the road temperature at this intersection? I mean, they know that, and he shares all that with them. So, very good communication, uh, and it's coming. The brine is coming. Salt is going to eventually not be 
You're not going to be able to run straight show. So that is that is coming in the future. And uh, is the people. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I, I had asked Laura to put this on the agenda. Um, obviously, the contract ends November, I'm sorry, October 31st. So we've got some time, but not a ton of time. Um, my, my primary concern, obviously, is, is that October then comes November and snow. Um, so if the overall desire of the town board is to try to continue working with Northwest and negotiate terms, let's say, cost per hour, length of contract, that kind of thing, that's one avenue. If the town board wants to solicit for additional contractors, pricing, all that kind of thing, that's a completely different fork in the road. And if we're going to do that, we should proactively move that direction tonight so that we've got time to do it. Sure. Um, secondly to that is whether or not the board wants to have the highway committee weigh in at all on any of that, or if that's something from a, a contract negotiation standpoint to potentially speed up or maybe not the process. Um, I did try to have Greg Keppel here tonight. He was not available, um, actually giving a speech, so to speak, educational on Brian in Chicago. So at this point, my hope is that you two gentlemen would be available for our highway committee meeting, which um, is in two weeks, essentially, um, to have Greg come to the highway committee meeting do a Q&A with him if you've got questions on Brian, not Brian, salt, salt sand, whatever it may be. Um, he would, in a good way, be the horse's mouth on that information. Um, so, in, I had a brief conversation with Ron, I think it was the tail end or middle of last week, um, about that in my own opinion. Understanding why the, why the contract is dated the way that it is, I think it would be a good thing for us to look at trying to give both the town board and whoever our contractor may be a little bit more notice and to split the terms of our agreement so that like a renewal period is in the spring, but the end of the service is actually in the fall so that they know material-wise for salt and all that kind of stuff going into the summer, whether they're coming back in the fall, um, but still have them run through like the fall time frame. So I think there's some, at the very least, some kind of housekeeping on, on terms that we could look at. But the big question is how do we want to proceed if we want to, you know, do it in confidence with Northwest, if we want to try to get additional vendors and that kind of stuff in on pricing and go from there and then try to curtail the Jefferson County conversation. In the middle. What, uh, what laws, statutes, um, what are we required to do? Are we required to competitively bid it? Is that just a decision this board can make or not make? Or are there laws that say we, we must do that? I do not believe there are because this is a time and material based contract okay. and it's not doing improvements, it's maintenance work. Um, I think it would be <coughs> absolutely in the best interest of the That's knowledge. what I was just going to um, say. And the other part of it is, if, you know, going back. Correct me if I'm wrong, but going back to 2018, there was kind of that mutual commitment, just like what Ron was asking about on Brian, um, so that when he's making the investment as a contractor, he knows that there's a term of service that's going to potentially pay back.